there was a recent story of a pharmaceutical company, mainly run by a hedge fund manager, uh, that took a dr or bought a drug, Daraprim, and increased the price by uh, it was several thousand percent. It was from thirteen fifty to seven hundred and fifty dollars per pill, and the manufacturing cost was in the range of a dollar. And so I guess my take on it was uh, it, it highlights to me a lot of different things. The, the greed on Wall Street, mm -hmm. the, uh, it's this weird sociopathic view of, of, the indu of industry in general and the, the, the clearances that a profit motive give you that mm -hmm. as if making a profit somehow justifies what the real world impact of that might be for those people and or for the, the insurers and the people that have to, to subsidize that cost. Right. Uh, it's also, to me, highlights uh, how we take uh, small disadvantaged uh, groups of people that may not have a voice and try to exploit them for profit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, it's able to go unnoticed uh, due to a variety of things like one, just being less blatant, you know, like raising mm -hmm. it from 13 to 26 or maybe 40, not you know, yeah. several hundred dollars. Like so, uh, but you know these types of things happen pretty regularly. And uh, again, we were mentioning the internet and its influence. Uh, we've mentioned it a few times, but that people were able to get the story and be able to respond to the story in real time and let that guy know how they felt about it. And you saw his story evolve over time about how he felt about it. And so I just wanted to get a little bit of your take on it. Yeah, I I think it's one of those things where um, it just really proves that there'll never be like a libertarian utopia because these types of, of issues, you know, allegedly will be sorted out by the free market. But I mean, if that's the argument that you want to take, that's fine. But how many people have to die? You know, how many people will not be able to get their medication because the free market is taking a little bit longer than it should to sort them out? And this is why uh, I think Bernie Sanders' campaign resonates so well with people because, I mean, he's giving a voice to everyone, you know what I mean? Because even though you may not necessarily know anyone who took the drug, I don't know if it was like Dar Daraprim or something like that. Uh, much. Daraprim, yeah. Daraprim, okay. Yeah, because, I mean, you may not know anybody, but, uh, you know, there are people out there who will literally die because this corporation has a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to be profitable. When, I mean, if, if you watch the interview, I, I just saw a brief clip of it, and the guy was not apologetic at all. I mean, it was, no, this wasn't even profitable, but now it's profitable. It's like, well, okay, think about what's wrong inherently with the way that we set up our capitalist system. I mean, if somebody is going to die because of the bottom line of a company, is that really, you know, the society that we really want to be? And so it really causes, I think, a lot of introspection on us and is why Bernie Sanders is the candidate. Uh, that's great. To uh, credit where credit is due, Hillary Clinton did speak out against this too. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to give her credit there because I don't want people to think mm -hmm. that I'm a Hillary basher. But, no, I mean, like, this is why. Like, we need someone who represents the little guy. I mean, individuals in Washington, they live in a bubble. We all live in a bubble to some degree, but, I mean, if you're in Washington, you don't meet with, you know, the lady from, like, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who needs this medicine and she's going to die if she doesn't get it. You know, you, you, you vote one way or the other, and then the consequences, you'll never know. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, that's why I think that the story, I like that it happened because it also shows that if you put enough pressure on a company, believe it or not, you know, uh, you can get them to change. I mean, he dropped the price of it. I would prefer to go the extra step and uh, pressure him to step down just because I want, you know, that to send a message to other CEOs, or I don't know if he's a CEO, but whoever, you know, I want this to send a message and to convey that if you are going to be immoral, I, a lot of people say corporations are amoral, but they're run by human beings, you know, who have morals. Uh, but if you're going to be immoral, then, sorry, there's no place in you in our uh, society, which is, you know, we're respectable, we care about people, you know, we're all... We're all, by and large, humanists, regardless of uh, if you're an atheist, if you're a Muslim, if you're Christian. Humanism is a thing that's getting really popular. We care about human beings and their suffering. So, yeah, I like that the story is getting attention. I like that there is pressure on them. Uh, this is, yeah, it's great. Yeah, you could see how easily a, a story like this could easily just miss, be not picked up on the radar just by not having such an egregious price rate or increase mm -hmm. or just uh, people not actually uh, really understanding what it was about or who was harming, I mean, it was harming, it, it was, it's used for HIV uh, treatment in general to help prevent uh, infections from spreading, but the actual purpose of the drug is beyond that, but I think that's mm -hmm. part of what 
brought it to a lot of people's attention and why the media ran with mm-hmm. it as an attempt to try and bring attention there. But it's one of those things where it, it might not have gotten the attention that it got uh, had it been some slightly different circumstances, but it's good that it's there and that we need to be paying attention to stuff like that and to listen totally. to people when they say stuff like that's happening. Because if somebody just totally. told me a story like, oh, you know, I went to go pick up my pill uh, the other day, my prescription, you know, and it's, uh, you know, 4,000 times more or 4,000 percent more than it was when I went last month, I, I'd be like, uh, are you sure there wasn't some sort of clerical error or... Right, The right. last thing I would think is some guy just bought the pill and decided to skyrocket the price and right. didn't care about how that would affect your life. Exactly. And my question is, like, what if he only raised it by, like, 1,000%? Would the media have picked it up? You know, it's it's yeah. these type of things. It's like if the media does their job, then you can see how, you know, there's accountability. So, yeah, I mean, I think this guy is kicking himself because, you know, he just got a little bit too greedy there. But it happens all the time. You know, drug prices are constantly going up. Like, my dad is a dialysis patient, uh, and he, he has so many different drugs, and constantly, you know, the different pills, like a whole slew of them. I couldn't even name half of them. Um, you know, prices increase and whatnot. So, yeah, it affects everyday people, and I love that the story is gaining so much traction. Yeah, this is like, uh, for instance, uh, the health insurance industry in general just incrementally raises prices, although not that incremental sometimes, 20%, 30% sometimes for mm-hmm. rates. And raising, uh, one of the things that's happening now is the raising of deductibles, uh, particularly for people in those middle-class uh, health plans uh, mm-hmm. that may, not, may or may not be getting many or any subsidies. And so there's... Oh, there's a lot of uh, cogs in the wheel, and we have to pay attention to all of them, and we have to make sure that when people are telling us things are happening, that we're listening, investigating, and you know, really taking some things that might sound outrageous uh, seriously, because sometimes they are serious and real, as this uh, this case showed us. Absolutely.